Hello everyone and welcome to this how-to episode. I'm Lucas, I'm working in the Lavo product management team and I'm responsible for MC squared consoles and associated products. Today I want to talk about how you can set up a remote monitoring system for your MC squared consoles. While we have a quite compelling offering based on our smart and VSM products, there's also a lot of things you can do right out of the box or based on some freeware tools. So let's have a look at this slide. On the left side, you can see the equipment that is located at our headquarter in Rastatt. So this is a replication of what you could find in your facility as well. So we have an MC squared 56 console surface and some backend devices. So a Nova 73 for audio processing, but I also have a remote access PC. And this remote access PC is connected to both my media streaming network but also to the control network. At my place, I have a computer that can connect to the control network back in Rastatt over a VPN connection. I'm now using regular tools like Windows Remote Desktop or TeamViewer to access this remote access PC and control my environment from there. It is crucial that you make sure that you can establish a proper connection from your remote location to your backend. So if you want to invoke, for example, MXGUI or AdminHD right from your place without using remote desktop, you would need to uh, free some specific ports in your network. So we have created this technical documentation that points out the TCP and UDP ports that would be required in AP environments for example, for admin HD and MX GUI. For this session, where we want to learn about remote monitoring, there are two main parts that we want to talk about. First thing is remote controlling and monitoring your devices. So talking about health status or device availability. Second is to really remote monitor audio. So bring back control room audio or program monitoring back to your home. So let's check it out. The following procedures about device control and device monitoring could be applied from either your PC directly or using the remote access PC in your facility. In my case, I'm using remote desktop to directly dive into the remote access PC. I'm using a Windows host um, since I wanted to use some Microsoft-based tools later. So the first thing I would like to show is the HTTP IO of the Nova 73. So we're using just any kind of browser and typing in the IP address of my remote system. This leads me to the HD core system information page that provides a lot of compelling information about my system. So first thing is that I get some information about my system type, the product version and the control system version I'm running. This could be crucial information in case there are any issues and you get in touch with our support colleagues. This is the IP address that we're connected to and I get some information straight away about the image versions of associated devices I'm running. So for example, I can see the version of my Ravenna board, but also the local IO in the console. Going to the network information tab, this is showing me all the configured IP addresses in the system. So my control network IP addresses, the management network IP addresses, but also all the Ravenna, the Ravenna IP addresses that I'm using. From the latest release, this is not only information, but I can also use it to invoke um, the page and directly dive into, for example, my Ravenna page. So looking at that, everything seems to be fine. My streams are green and my PTP is connected. The PTP graph will establish over time. Another crucial bit is my system alarm. So 
by going to the system alarm page, I can see any currently active alarm and it seems my system is fine. To issue one alarm manually, I will just reboot the Ravenna card. Since the device becomes unavailable, I should see this alarm now in a second. And here it is. The page automatically updates and shows me any current active alarm. What is also very interesting is the alarm backlog. So this alarm backlog shows me all alarms that have been appeared over time, but that might also be resolved. On the device information tab, I can go to my device availability. This overview shows me all information about, for example, temperatures, voltages, user alarms, but also synchronization sources, etc. On the area down here, I can dive into a per device level. So for example, again, for the Ravenna card. And it seems all the availability is fine. And I can also look on my temperatures and voltages. Last but least, the HTTP IO provides the possibility to access my system log files. So I can either look into my current system log files straight away from the browser or use this instance to download it. To sum it up, the system overview gives me a straight insight into the system and its components, while the network information page shows me all the relevant IP addresses. I can access my alarm management system. I can dive into individual devices in the device availability tab, or I can access my system log files. The HTTP IO is not the only useful source of information. Next, I want to use the regular MX GUI to connect to my system. Using MX GUI, I can straight away have a compelling overview of the live situation of my system. I have access to all the mixing aspects of the system. And if you're interested about those, you might have a look into our Lava Lounge session about Mix Kitchen. For remote monitoring purpose, I can, of course, build metering pages. But I can also access my devices via the signal settings and have a look onto my overall system condition. We have seen in the HTTP IO the device availability and system alarm tabs. We can also use the signal settings page to have that displayed. So if I, for example, once more reboot the Ravenna card so that it becomes unavailable, I will have that displayed in the signal settings also straight away. So my card becomes unavailable. Of course, device availability and alarm management is only one part of what I would like to remote monitor from distance. The second bit is audio. And let's have a look what I can do in order to remote monitor my available streams in the network, but also to have audio brought back to my home. What I did is that I installed the A67-2110 stream monitor that you can download from our website. This application is really helpful and it comes in two versions. By default, it is in demo mode. This means that you can at all time use stream one and stream two receivers to monitor your system. If you want to make use of all 16 individual receivers, you can purchase a license. But let's hook up receiver one as an example. So I have set up a stream 
that is replicating my control room audio of the MC Squared 56 console. And if I add that to the system, it straight away shows me this A channel stream, including some LUFS metering. If I click on that receiver, I get some even more compelling information on the right side here. I can see some general stream statistics like its URL, the stream name, but I can also see information about bytes received, packets received, and if there are some issues, so packet loss. I can furthermore look, in, look into the STP file and could copy it for some further usage, and also look into my network statistics of this particular NIC that I'm using. But there's even more. With the use of Stream Monitor, I can also listen into the audio. And you can set that up by clicking on the Lava logo. This is where you configure your stream network in general, but also this pre-listen functionality. And in my case, since I'm using Microsoft Remote Desktop, I have the possibility to select remote audio as a playback device for this pre-listen functionality. Doing that, the system will automatically transfer the audio that is played back by Stream Monitor using Microsoft Remote Desktop and play it back on my device right here at my home. The only thing I need to do is to activate the headphones and I can even click through the several different available stream parts of the stream. So remember, Stream Monitor is free for the first two receiver instances. So just go to a website and download it and you can straight away use it to remote monitor your facility. Of course, the audio quality Microsoft Remote Desktop or TeamViewer do provide might be a little bit poor for real audio mixing. However, it gives a good idea if things are going wrong or right within your facility. If you're looking to some better audio quality, I would recommend that you check out, for example, Unity Connect or Lucy Live as audio codecs. So I hope I've been able to give you some insights about how you can remote control your MC Squared system, not only from a control, but also from an audio perspective. If there are any more questions, don't miss our website on www.lavo.com or just reach out to one of us. Stay safe and see you soon.